So hi out there in Floss Tube Land. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Monday, October 5th at approximately 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm coming to you today with my typical weekly-ish update um, regarding cross-stitch. Um, the stuff that has happened with me cross-stitch-wise this past week or so, give or take. Um, first off, a little uh, housekeeping. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I hope that you find some good content on my channel and that you continue to watch. Um, let me know, you know, where you're from, where you're watching from. I'd love to hear from you. Um, those of you that have just found my channel, this is my channel where I talk about cross stitch. I talk about other crafts that I do, including diamond painting and other crafts in general. And I also may upload and talk a little bit about my ghost hunting experience. Um, and just some life stuff thrown in general. So if you're interested, please uh, watch a few of my videos. And if you really like what I have to say or really like what you see, go ahead and click the subscribe button and then click the notification bell uh, to be notified when I upload new content. If you're a returning watcher, thank you for coming back. Again, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, I encourage you to click the subscription button and to uh, click the bell so you'll, know, you'll be notified when I do upload new content. Um, also, if you're a subscriber and you've come back to watch, thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. And I'm really appreciate, appreciative of all your support and the kindness that you have shown me in the Floss Tube community. Um, it's been great. I've been at this for a little while and there's still times when I feel just brand new and just doing my first video. So, that being said, I have a couple of uh, little things to um, add in for you. So uh, one of the first things I'm going to show you this past week, uh, or a week ago Friday, I am in the Bee Stitch Me Facebook group for Bee Stitch Me Hand Dyed Fabrics. And on Fridays, they do an event, they host an event called the Friday Night Fight Night, where they post some of their hand dyed fabrics up for grabs. Um, at 9 p.m. Central or 10 p.m. Eastern Time on a Friday night. And basically, the first to comment me, please, on the photos of the hand-dyed fabrics that are available, get the chance to purchase the fabrics. And they call it Friday Night Fight Night because you can, you can be the, th the first person, the third person, the tenth person, the thirtieth person on a post for a piece of hand dyed fabric from Be Stitch Me, and you still may have a chance to win the ability to purchase the fabric. They put up all different kinds of uh, fabric types, 14 count, 18 count, Ada, Jobelin, linen, different counts of those, like 28 count, 32 count, 36 count, 40 count, whatever. Whatever she has dyed, whatever she has on hand from custom orders that either, um, didn't, didn't go through or she actually dyed extra fabric for um she puts up on her friday night fight night and you go and um, you put your name down for um the possibility to win she also has a weekly raffle for the people that purchase stuff on her site or the win that win friday night fight night raffles and i happen to win another a fourth piece of fabric so i did get my be stitch me order in this week and I will put that video, the unbagging video, of my Be Stitch Me order here. Hi Floss Tube, this is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Friday, October 2nd at approximately 11.30 in the morning. And I'm just coming to you today with a little bit of a haul update. Um, so those of you that have watched my recent video know that I had... Um, participated in the Be Stitch Me Friday Night Fight Night fabric um, race to win some uh, Be Stitch Me hand dyed fabrics. And I actually won. So I have that package for you today. Um, so my Be Stitch Me Friday night fight night fabrics came in today. So I'm going to be unbagging this for you. I'm so excited. This is my first Be Stitch Me fabric 
order that I have and I'm just really excited to get this. So um, without further ado, I will be going, going ahead and opening up the package so you'll get to see my reaction. This came in the mail yesterday. Yeah, I have a, I have a little blemish in my cheek. Um, it's, uh, you know, great kind of going through changes and yeah. So anyway, I have a little blemish in my cheek. It, it doesn't hurt anymore, but anyway, so, um, without further ado, I will get into my Be Stitch Me Friday Night Fight Night haul. I'm excited. This is my first Be Stitch Me. It's a uh, pretty thick. I think there's probably a I'm guessing four pieces of fabric in here. The three pieces that I won um, the Friday Night Fight Night and I was lucky enough to win one of the additional raffles that she puts up for the people that place orders or win um, Friday Night Fight Night fabrics. So, here it goes. Wow, this is cool you guys. This is pretty cool. So here they are. I'm excited. Here's my little invoice that tells me what I want. Okay, so I think this top one that I'm looking at is the one that I, the raffle giveaway that I won. So um, I will start with this one. I think this is it. Yeah, this looks like, this looks like a, wow, these guys are just beautiful. Because I kind of don't remember what, um, what I posted me please on. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so this is, uh, I paid the invoice, the invoice that I paid, um, I had some credits in PayPal for it. So, um, I ended up paying, um, a total of $75, give or take, um, with shipping. So, um, this is, this is exciting. Yay. So I got four pieces of fabric here to show you. So this first one is an 18 by 27 piece of linen, 28 count linen. Um, not exactly sure the colorway, but, um, so this is it. I will show you, whoops, upside down, sorry about that. And I will take it out. These are packaged very nicely in their own little, um, uh, baggie. Again, I'm not sure the colorway, because it's not marked on here, but it's kind of a deep bluish gray, maybe with a little green tint to it. Beautiful, you guys. And it's hand surge or it's surge. It's beautiful. Uh, this, this would be great for a Halloween piece or like a stormy night piece. Here's the other side. Very nice. I'm excited for this, you guys. It's 18 by 27. This one's a, t a 32 count. So this is a 32 count linen. Um, most of the pieces I... Uh, requested on uh, Friday night fight night where um, linen there was a couple that I requested for um, there were a couple that I requested as um, Ada pieces um, so I could like kind of gift them to my mother but I didn't win any of the Ada pieces that I had um, that I had commented on so um, all of these are even weaves or um, whatnot. I forgot to put that back in here. It's the little card. I kind of wish the colors would have been documented on here, but maybe she didn't um, come up with color names for them. So, anyway, there's the first piece. exciting. Ooh, this one's pretty. This one is a, um, kind of a peach orange and a dark gray, it looks like, or maybe even a dark purple. This one is, uh, 18 by 27 opal linen in 32 count. This is lot 392. So this was the one I won. One of the ones that I won during Fright Night, uh, Fight Night. This is beautiful, you guys. So, and it's opal, so it has a shimmer to it. Again, this is 18 by 27, 32 count linen. Look at this, you guys. 
and you can see the shimmer. You see the shimmer? It's opal. So it shimmers. This one's really pretty. Here's the other side, and I will put it lengthwise for you. Turn around this way so you can see it. It's beautiful. This would make another really nice Halloween piece, I think. Okay. And it's really soft. I'm really, really kind of looking forward to these. Yeah. This is really exciting. Yeah, if you want to see. So this was 32 count opal, linen, 18 to 27. That was the first one I won. The second one I won is um, another piece. This is 28 count Lugana, opal Lugana, an 18 by 27 piece of 28 count opal Lugana in orange. And it's bright Halloween orange. Sorry about that. Um, for some reason, it kind of cut out on me. So anyway, um, I was getting ready to show the uh, 28 count uh, Opal Lugana. This is the second lot that I won. Again, this is 2018 by 27. And you can see the shimmer in the fabric. This one isn't as modeled as some of the other ones. You can still see modeling, but it's not as uh, diverse as the other ones. That's really pretty. Really, really, really pretty. Okay, so that was lot number two that I had won. And lot number three is uh, remastered. That is the color that is written on the tag. Um, this is the only one with the color on it. Um, this is a uh, 25 count Lugana. So this is actually my first piece of 25 count. So I will get to try this out. Um, 25 count, 18 by 27. This is um, blues and purples. It's really pretty. Really pretty. So excited for this. So, look at this, you guys. This is the back side. So I'm really excited to have my first order of B Stitch Me cross stitch fabric. Um, the smallest count I got was 25 count. The biggest count I got was 36. Nope, 32 count was the biggest count, the biggest fabric count I ended up with. But uh, I'm so excited. Let me get these back in the bags. So yeah, I will link the Be Stitch Me Facebook group um, down below. Tonight is another, um, <clears throat> I believe tonight they're doing another Friday night fight night. Um, I may try and participate. I don't know, but I just, um, you know, we'll see. I'll take a look and see what uh, fabrics they have tonight and see. But yeah. Um, These are my Be Stitch Me Friday Night, Friday Night 
fabrics. That I got. So, if you're interested, join the Be Stitching Facebook, uh, Hand Dyed Fabrics Facebook group, and uh, you too can potentially earn or win some Friday Night Fight Night um, Hand Dyed Craft Stitch Fabrics. Alright, thank you. Um, I will hopefully be recording some more, um, another installment for you this weekend. Um, but until then, we'll see you soon. Keep on keeping on because that's all we can do. Wear your masks and stay healthy. Thanks a lot. Bye. So hopefully you enjoyed the um, Be Stitch Me fabric unbagging video. And um, I also have another little video snippet. So um, I was watching a mother and daughter YouTube channel. I can't think off the top of my head. I think it was Flossom. Flossom Stitches. Flossom. F L O S S O N E floss and stitches. The um, mother was showing a tool on one of their YouTube videos that she had found um, at her local craft store. I don't remember if it was a Hobby Lobby or Joanne's or someplace, but she had found this little tool. It's a seam ripper that has a little. It has a cap on the um, the seam ripper part. It's just a typical seam ripper but it has a rubbery end on the, the one end of it, of the cap. And she was, uh, she had mentioned that Stephanie from Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching had um, mentioned in one of her YouTube videos, or it, may, it might have been one of her Instagram lives um, or whatnot about this tool. So she went and got, she went and found one and she got one. And she's, she was uh, talking about how you can use it when you have to frog your stitches on a piece and whenever you frog sometimes your floss leaves a little extra lint behind and you can use this rubbery tip on the seam ripper to kind of help pull out the fl the floss lint that you um, get when you frog stitches so i thought that was an interesting idea so when we went to um we went out on our typical friday night um we went out on our typical Friday night uh, shopping excursions a couple weeks ago. I picked one up. We went to a Hobby Lobby, and I found it in the, the Notion section near the fabrics, where they have the fabrics on the bolts that you can buy by the yard. And um, it's in the little bins where they have, like, the $1.99 tape measures and little $1.99, you know, like the little $1.99 scissors um, and, uh, you know, Little, little things like that. Um, that's where I happened to get the, um, this one is in a $1.99 scissor. I got this from my uh, local needle workshop um, as a gift. I think it went at the retreat or what, as a gift anyway. Um, it might have been in one of my, um, one of my subscription boxes from them or something. But anyway, um, yeah, you can find a little tool at the Notion. So or at, in the Notions at Hobby Lobby. Um, I've also heard that you can probably find them at Joann's. Um, I haven't checked Joann's because I, I found one already, so I don't need a second one. But um, I bought one for my mom. I bought one for me, and uh, it's really cute. So I um, actually had to frog some stitches on Saturday morning. So um, I was working on Fireside Original Seahorses. You'll see that piece here in a little bit. And... Um, I had to frog some stitches on it and the stitches were in red so I had some red lint that I had to get off of my piece so you I will um, I kind of videotaped um, the little video snippet of me using the tool and I will insert that video for you here so anyway we have this seam ripper and then here is the cap for the seam ripper that has this rubberized tip so um, I am going to go down here and you can see that where I've actually pulled some of the stitches right in here, there's just the lightest touch of red. So basically all you do is um, you rub the tip up against the area and it's supposed to help pull the fuzzies out. And you can see there's no more fuzzies. 
You don't see any red fuzzies there. So um, you can get this tool. You can get this seam ripper. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was in their little notions trays over near their sewing, you know, where they have their, um, weird, where they have their, um, like little dollar 99 little pairs of scissors and little, um, measure tapes and stuff like that. This is a seam fixer and it has the seam ripper and this little, like, it's kind of a rubberized tip on it that you can use to um, get your um, little fuzzies off if you have to frog. And for those of you new to cross stitch, frogging means you rip it, rip it, rip it, or not ripping it in that sense, but you, you're pulling stitches out that you made in error. Um, that is what frogging is. So um, this is a neat little tool called the seam fixer. Um, that you can use when you have to frog stitches and the, the uh, area that you have to pull your stitches out from has um, a little bit of fuzzy lint from the color. You can use this, uh, this tool, this handy little tool to um, pull the fuzzies out of your fabric. Hope that helps. Thanks. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed the little video of the um, little seam ripper with the rubberized tip tool to add to your stitchy box. Um, it's been a kind of an interesting little thing. I wasn't, you know, you don't always expect a frog, but when you do, um, having a tool like that would probably be invaluable to anybody. Um, and for those of you new to cross stitch, frogging is when you have to pull out stitches that you've already stitched because either they're in the wrong color, they're placed wrong, um, they don't look right to you you know, stuff like that. So you have to actually pull the stitches out that you previously completed. And I found out on my Fireside Original Seahorses, I'm working on the February one, which is the, the pair of red and pink seahorses for February. In the middle at the top, um, that I had stitched the spines or the belly spines going down the dark red seahorse um, in the wrong color. It was supposed to be dark red 815, and I stitched it in like 351, which is kind of more of a salmon, salmon red color. And it, um, yeah, I realized that after I had went to move, you know, add another length of floss and was looking at the chart and the, um, the symbol that I was looking at, I was like, oh, you're kidding me. So I had to frog some stitches that I previously completed, including about 30 minutes of work that I had already put in that morning. So... That's what I worked on um, Saturday morning, getting some of that. And I, I got I got a little bit of progress on seahorses. Um, unfortunately, that was in October. Seahorses was part of my whip go for September. Um, so anyway, I will be, get, be getting into plans and show you some updates here pretty soon. Um, that being said, I also have another little video snippet to um, show you. Because it's now October 5th, I can show you my Garon Toten Bags Grime Guard of the Month. So here is my Grime Guard. And I will put the unbagging video for you here. So hi everybody out in Flossy Land. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. It's about 11.45 a.m. on Friday, October 2nd. And I'm coming to you today with a little bit of a haul. Um, I'm filming this sec segment separately from my Be Stitch Me Friday Night Fight Night fabric haul because um, this is my Garon Toten Bags Grime Guard of the Month. And we're supposed to wait until the 5th of the month before we show our Grime Guards and Bag of the Month um, shipments. Um, that way we don't spoil the surprise for everybody. But I did get my Garon Toten Bags Grime Guard of the Month. You can see I have already busted into the package because I wanted to see it and this month it is super duper cute it's Halloween themed so you have Frankenstein and ghosts in an airplane with bats and skulls and planes with witches hats on them and all kinds of stuff it is really super cute the Frankenstein and the ghosts in a plane just really make me laugh so this is my Garon Grime Guards 
Garon Tote and Bag's Grime Guard for this month. Um, I get the 11 by 11 size because um, that's generally the type of Q-snaps that I use. So this is super duper cute, you guys. And as always, it smells super wonderful. Thank you, Ronnie and Gary, for another great product. And I'm looking forward to adding this to some of my Halloween um, projects that I've got going on this month. All right. So that's all I have for you this week. <laughs> that's all I have for you for this little, little mini installment. Um, take care and uh, keep on keeping on because it's all we can do. Wear your masks and stay healthy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> all right. So I was wrong. I actually have my um, little tool here. This is the seam fixer. This is the seam ripper and little rubberized tool. So it's just a basic seam ripper, you can see there. It's just a basic seam ripper that has a cap. And the cap has a little rubberized tip that you can use to rub on your um, fabric. So that is that. I didn't think I had it down here, but I guess I did. All right, so um, for the video today, we're gonna I'm gonna show you some whip updates. Um, there's only two pieces really that I stitched on. Um, I worked on some diamond painting stuff too for two challenges this week. But there's really not a whole lot that I worked on um, stitching wise because I only really had I only really had one piece that I worked on for two different prompts for this week. And um yeah, so um Anyway, I will get to whip updates here in a minute. The other, um, you've seen some haul. I don't really have much else in the way of haul um, to show you. And uh, I will also talk about October stitchy plans because there's lots of stitchy plans for this month. Um, so yeah, so let me get started. So the first thing um, I worked on for for this last week was uh, for Crystal Academy. There was several different prompts that we had this week. I did two diamond painting prompts um, for the same two diamond paintings that I showed you last week. I just got a little farther on them. I'm not going to show them to you today because they're, um, well, I can show one of, you, one of them to you today, but they're both upstairs, the other one's upstairs. So the first cross stitch piece that I worked on was the Frosted Pumpkin Midnight Way. And um, I can insert a picture of where I started, I think, here. Um, if I don't have the picture here, um, if I don't, in, don't find the picture, um, then I'll just kind of explain to you where, <laughs> where I was. But anyway, here is um, Frosted Pumpkins Midnight Way as it stands right now. So this is Broomhilda's. So you can see I've basically completed all of this stuff in here. I didn't have this stuff completed, so I've done all this. There's a gray, kind of a dark gray, a uh, purple fuchsia color, and a 500 color green um, down here. So you can see where the crows go up here, and then, you know, this is filled in with orange. But yeah, so I got a good chunk of this done um, this weekend, or this, this past week. Um, and then I put it away because I was done with the uh, prompts that I needed for Crystal Academy. So um, we had to stitch on something with a doorway or entryway. And um, something with a keyhole. So, um, you know, the businesses have doors. And uh, in order to get into the businesses, you need a key. And you put the key in a keyhole. So um, that's how you lock up the businesses too. So it fit those two prompts for me this week. So that is where I'm at on Frosted Pumpkin Midnight Way. Yes, I'm behind. I know they have the fourth piece out, which is the banner at the bottom. But anyway, hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. My husband came down to ask me a question. He's um, upstairs fixing dinner, so that's probably what you hear. So the second piece that I pulled out, um, this is this was on my whip go for um, September. And I didn't stitch on it at all last month. And um, for a little extra fun on Saturday morning, I decided that I kind of wanted to work on it. And um, it would also kind of fit into one of the prompts for the School of Magical Stitches. We had to stitch family trees for people this last week. And um, one of the families that we had to stitch for 
was King Triton. And of course, we had to pick something that has to do with under the sea type creatures. And why I picked my Fireside Original Seahorses. So um, where I was at on this, um, I only had this little bit up here done and a little bit of this. Now you can see this dark red here and these dark red spines right here. Um, I only had up to about here stitched for the dark red, for the, for the red, for these spines, but they were stitched in the wrong color. And I realized when I was supposed to come over here to stitch this, that these spines were supposed to be the same color as this, which was DMC A15. So I had to frog this. So you saw in my video kind of about where I started for this when I was using the tool to remove the lint. So this is where I got on um, this. It was approximately, I think, 217 stitches that I filled in for this because I started filling in here. Now this color that fills in between these um, spines on the belly of the seahorse um, was the color that the spines originally were. So yeah, I had to frog that. But this is where I got on seahorses. This is from Fireside Originals. This is a series. Um, there were 12 in the series, and they came out two at a time. Um, I believe in 20, I want to say 2018 is when they were released. I could be wrong. It could be 2019, but I believe they came out in 2018. And um, so this is the set. I have the whole series, and I'm doing them on the called for fabric at this point in time. I don't know what I don't know what that fabric will be or what that fabric is rather because it's upstairs but I am doing it on the called for fabric it was a specialty fabric that was hand dyed specifically for um, Carol Grant who owns Fireside Originals she is the designer and uh, this fabric was specifically hand dyed for her project to look kind of like you can see the bubbles and stuff and the variegations it's in blues and greens to kind of look like um seawater but you can see like the bubbles floating up um, on the fabric and stuff it's a really neat piece of fabric and all of them i'm stitching all of them on one big piece so um yeah this is the february and i think this is the male seahorse for february the dark red one i think they're called fred and ginger is the february seahorses and then this needle minder is just one that um, we found. I found this pin at uh, an anime convention and I added a magnet. I popped the pin off the back and added a magnet. Um, I think he's just a little teeny dragon listening to music. But yeah, I got this uh, button at an anime convention. Turn it into a needle minder. I thought it was really cute. So this is Seahorses. And this is a Garon Totenbag's uh, Grime Guard as well. This one is just dragonflies and stuff, but it's kind of blue and green and it looks like it's watery kind of stuff, but it is dragonflies. So I just figured, eh, I'll just put this on here since it's water. Um, yeah. So that is Fireside Originals. This is the Seahorses, the Seahorses series. Okay. And that pretty much does it for just the stitching that I've done this week. Um, like I said, I haven't done a whole lot. Um, my stitchy bug has kind of not really been there. And um, yeah, so anyway. Um, so now we're kind of going on to October plans. So um, I kind of alluded to some of these things um, last, last video that uh, there was a lot going on, and boy howdy, there's a lot going on for October. So, all right, I'm gonna kind of go through this. This, These are the plans for October, some of the plans, some of them I'm probably gonna participate in. These all have to do with Facebook challenge groups that I'm involved in, and you've seen the list on some of my past videos. There's a lot of challenge groups out there and everything like that. One of the things I did wanna bring up, um, so, I used to be in the challenge group, semi-sane stitchers, and um, I had previously alluded to the fact that I was bumped out of the group, and I kind of found out why I was bumped out of the group. It's nothing to do with the group. It's nothing to do with me. It's nothing to do with anything I posted. It just happens to be the fact that I didn't 
uphold my commitment to participate in some of their events. Um, so I did go back um, over the weekend to check because I check on occasion to see if they've opened opened enrollment back up. And I think when they um, when they bump you out of the group, they uh, you have a certain amount of time that you can't request to be jo to join the group back up. Um, but I guess that period of time after me getting bumped has expired, and I was able to click the join join button again. Um, I just kind of wanted to see what what information they're asking for so I could kind of understand why I was bumped from the group. But um, anyway, the, the uh, questions that you have to answer came up. So the first question that you have to answer for semi-sane is who recommended you to the group? And you have to give their name and they will verify that that person recommended you to the group. Um, you also have to tell them what events the person told you about that you're going to participate in. And then you must agree to participate in two events over the span of three months. So if you don't do, if you don't meet all three of those criteria, they have the right to bump you out of the group, which I was. Because, you know, I was stretched a little thin and I wasn't stitching for everything at once. And I was just kind of doing my own thing for a while. And, um, well, I didn't meet the two events over three months requirement. So I got bumped out. So if you're interested in joining Semi-Sane Stitchers, um, all the information for all the challenge groups that I'm involved in that I know of are below. So go ahead and check them out. So that's great, great for them. I can get back into Semi-Sane and I may end up doing so, but because uh, I like some of their challenges that they have going on. You know, they have like Alphabet Soup and all kinds of other ones going on. Um, and I may actually end up joining back in the group but because uh, right now I think I'm just going to hold off. I might do it at the beginning of the year, but I'm going to hold off because um, I have a long list of groups. There's that stuff and that stuff and all that. So my husband just came down to tell me that dinner's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and I will return with the list of um, the list of challenges that I know of going on for the month of October. So I will be back with that video here in a bit. See you soon. So hi there, just a really quick snippet. Um, <clears throat> I went upstairs, had dinner with my mom and my husband, and we had Bahama Mamas with um, German potato salad and sauerkraut. It was really good. Bahama Mamas, for those of you that don't know, are basically like these spicy sausage um, things kind of similar to brats but not really and there's a german restaurant here in columbus called schmitz and they're known for their bahama mama um sausages and it's really really good they, they have a really nice spice to them and a casing on them they're really really good so that's what we had for dinner tonight <clears throat> but anyway so i kind of wanted to backtrack a little bit back to fireside originals this is the um February seahorse of the month um, that they have. Here is the pattern. So you can see here, I'm working on the dark red seahorse. And you can see in the pattern that the spines are supposed to be a darker red. And I had swapped the colors. So I was actually doing this lighter color for the spines on his belly instead of 815. So this is the February one. And I brought down December's. This is December's. Um, I think this is December's. Yes, it's candy cane. Um, it's called Holly. This one's called Holly for December. And you can see he's got a Holly for his fin. But um, this is what the piece is going to look like fully finished. So this is all 12 of the seahorses. And you can see they've been designed to represent the different seasons. Like this snow one up here in the upper left corner is January. It's snow or ice. So yeah, different seasons of seahorses. And I will be doing them on the one piece. So this, um, this fabric is 32 count Marl Lake from Crossed Wing Collection. Mall Lake? 
either Marl Lake or Mall Lake, M-A-U-L or M-A-R-L, from Crossed Wing Collection. It was dyed specifically for Carol with Fireside Originals. So that is where I'm at. All right. <laughs> so back from dinner, and dinner was really good. Um, I have my Dr. Pepper cream soda um, thing. This is really good stuff. I really, really, really love the orange vanilla Coke. Um, out of all the Coke flavors that have come out, besides the cinnamon Coke that came out last winter, I hope they bring cinnamon Coke back because I'm going to go get more cinnamon Coke. But um, I really like the Dr. Pepper and cream soda one. It's really, really kind of smooth and really kind of nice. I kind of like this one a lot too. So um, those are, this is kind of what I'm into recently, the orange vanilla Coke and the cream soda Dr. Pepper. So anyway, little, little side bit there. So as I was talking about before dinner, I was getting into October challenges and the weekly challenges for the different challenge face Facebook groups that I know of and an sort of involved in and kind of doing things with randomly here and there. So that being said, I will kind of get going with it. So the first group that um, I have challenge for is Enchanted Stitching Challenges. Um, this month's movie for October is Hocus Pocus. So we get, uh, we get points and bonus points if we watch Hocus Pocus and stitch along to the movie. And the challenge prompts for each week are kind of based on the movie itself. Um, so for an enchanted stitching challenges, depending on how many stitches you put in, determines your rank. So for noble, you only have to stitch 50 hour, 50 stitches or 30 minutes. For knight, you have to stitch 100 stitches or one hour. And for royal, you have to stitch 250 stitches or two hours. You can count. You don't have to count. You can count your time. But um, for Noble, you get one point. Knight, you get two points. For Royal, you get five points. And they also have um, penalty stitches that you can stitch, but this week there's no penalty stitches. Um, for Enchanted Stitching Challenges, I have been sorted into Team Epcot. And um, I don't think I've participated in any of these challenges, So I think, or in any challenges recently. So I think in order to maintain my membership in the Facebook group. I'm going to have to get on and stitch a couple of these. So for this week, um, it's week one of Hocus Pocus. It goes from uh, my big, big Bixby on my phone is like activating based on my, um, based on my voice. It's kind of annoying. So, um, this is week one. It goes from today, October 5th until the 11th at midnight. And again, I'm on team Epcot. Um, we've been kind of, um, separated into the different Disney Disney parks, so to speak. So uh, the first prompt is stitch on something related to music. Uh, the second prompt is something that gives you new life. So for the stitch on something related to music, one of the things that I think I might actually start is that... Um, so I think it's Silver Creek Samplers. Sing a Sampler series, the Do Re Mi, um, because it's my favorite. My favorite musical is The Sound of Music, and um, you know it's one of one of the pieces that I have that I want to start this winter. Um, I was hoping to start it watching The Sound of Music, but you know, hey, <laughs> I might still watch The Sound of Music and um, start it because um, The Sound of Music. I grew up watching that. My grandma had an eight track tape of it of the soundtrack, and my grandma is the one that got me into to, um, crafting in general. My grandma was huge into crafting. And ev every summer and every time I'd go visit her, we'd spend a good chunk of the summer doing crafts and stuff together. And one of the things that we would do while we were crafting was she would put the 8-track soundtrack of The Sound of Music in her 8-track player. And we would sing along and craft all day long with the 8-track um, the tape on loop. <laughs> If you know what an A-track tape is, boy, I'm really showing my age there. But yeah, she had the A-track soundtrack of The Sound of Music, and I we used to sing along, and I pretty much know the whole movie by heart. And um, I can tell you 
even what parts they cut out of the full length version for commercials and where they cut out in the commercials and stuff like that, just because I've watched it so much. Um, I What surprises me, though, is I don't have the 40th anniversary edition that came out several years back, which really surprises me because I really like the movie and I, it's on my wish list. I still want the 40th anniversary edition of The Sound of Music. Um, one of my goals, one of my bucket list goals, sorry if I get, you know, sorry for getting on a tangent, but one of my bucket list goals is to actually go to Austria and to take the Sound of Music tour. Um, my grandparents went to Austria in the 80s. My grandma died in 1986, but my uh, grandparents went to Austria in the very early 80s when she was uh, still kind of battling cancer. And um, they took a trip of a lifetime and went there and they went on the Sound of Music tour because grandma knew that I would really want to see, you know, the different pieces. So they took a bunch of pictures and sent me postcards and stuff like that. So that was really cool. But my bucket list is to go to Austria um, to take the Sound of Music tour. Um, <laughs> so that is one of the things. Anyway, so that is a tangent. So that would be uh, task number one for Enchanted Stitch Stitching Challenges for Hocus Pocus Week 1. Task two is something that stitch on something that gives you new life. Uh, pandemic sampler, maybe. I don't know. Task three, stitch on a piece you can relate to cats. Well, I have a Mill Hill kit that has a little black cat in it. Um, there's a Heaven and Earth design that was just released uh, very recently that has a bunch of cats in it. Um, I think it's actually called Pandemic Cats. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking about getting that one. Um, and then task four is stitch on a piece that is a curse to you. So I could actually probably do, um, for that one, I could probably do Stone Hearth Hutch. Stone Hearth, Stone Hearth, however you say it. The Thomas Kincaid one from the um, magazine that I am working on because the pattern is really annoying to follow. Um, you have blocks of color, but the, the, the block of the same color has three to, two or three different symbols in that color because you're supposed to add blending filament two or three different ways to it to make it sparkle because it's Thomas Kincaid. And uh, the pattern, I think, is, it's just annoying and it's kind of a pain in the butt to really follow. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that I might actually, I could probably put that in as a task four for Enchanted Stitching Challenges. So that's it for week one. Again, this, this month's uh, movie is Hocus Pocus. So for School of Magical Stitches, we are reading Villains Book 6, The Odd Sisters. Um, and the week one prompts for the book started today or last, basically at midnight last night. Um, so task one is to stitch on a whip with a teacup. And yes, it must have a teacup. Or if you, if it has a mug and you stitch, you eat, you drink tea out of a mug, typically you can use that. But it has to have a teacup. Um... You have to stitch 300 stitches on that. Um, I'd have to look. I'm not sure any of my current projects have teacups in them. I might be able to find one with a mug, but I don't know that I've started anything that has a teacup in it. So I don't know if I have one for that prompt. Or I could just stitch 450 penalty stitches, which is something I might do anyway. Um, prompt two, you can stitch 400 stitches on a piece to be judged by fairies or like to be judged in a fair. Um, so like if you have a, you know, like an heirloom piece or like, you know, a piece that you, you, you know, you would consider putting in a fair, you can stitch on that. And then test three is to do 300 stitches on something you can get stuck in like mud. Um, I might do stone hearth hatch for that one because it's snowy. You can get stuck in the snow and the ice in the winter. Um, you can get snowed in your house, so you'd be stuck in your house because of the deep snow. So I might actually do that um, for that. And that is it for School of Magical Stitches this week. For Mythological Stitchers, um, the month long, we are doing um, witches. And there's a total of five prompts, but three main ones. And three is um, 
three is broke down into three different prompts each. So the first prompt is 1,500 stitches or 15 hours on a project relating in some way that has dice, candles, dolls, potions, or bones. My husband says I don't love him because I pause it when he comes downstairs. Hi, Dylan. Hi. He says hi. All right. Okay, so task, task two for mythological stitchers, this is in the month-long witches challenge, is a thousand stitches or ten hours on a piece related to crossroads, torches, ghost, or night. And then um, there's quite a few I could do for that one. So task 3A is 500 stitches or five hours on a task related to the evil queen, either the Disney or Grim Fairy Tales evil queen, um, or a project with shoes. Don't ask me why shoes is important there. It tells it in the description, but yeah. So 3B is 500 stitches or five hours on a piece related to Dr. Facilier or Voodoo. I don't, I don't know that I have anything that would match that. Um, and th task 3C is 500 stitches or five hours on a piece related to Ursula, mermaids, or sea creatures. So I can actually put 500 more stitches on the seahorses for that and um, kind of participate. So um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. And that is month long. That is for mythological stitchers. Okay. So um, for mythological stitchers, we are on week two. I don't know what the theme is for week two. I didn't write it down, but it goes from today until the 11th. So the goal for week two, this is just the weekly challenge. The other one I just told you about was the monthly challenge for October. Stitch 500 stitches or five hours on a project with an animal familiar or something you might use to avenge. Now, I don't know what I could use. Um, I might be able to stitch. I could probably actually stitch on the bewitching owl that I started for magazine monthly challenge back in October because I can use an owl as a familiar. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that. Week three um, for mythological stitchers starts on the 12th, goes to the 18th. We have to stitch 500 stitches or five hours on a project that is either good or evil. And you have to pick which one and say why. Um, week four is 1019 to 1025, 500 stitches or five hours on a labyrinth or something with stones. So by a labyrinth, you could do a mandala um, type of piece, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I have um, Glendon Place Pumpkin Squirrel that I have kitted up and ready to go. Um, I might be able to start that for, or to work on that for week four, stitching for mythological stitchers. And then week five, 1026 to 11-1, 500 stitches or five hours on a project for Halloween, Samhain, or something with fall colors. Again, I can do like the Bewitching Owl. Um, I can do pretty much anything, you know, like Scary Berry, I can finish that up because it's Halloween, whatever. Um, for Myth and Magic Stitch Wars, I'm simply just a villager. So about the only thing that I have going on this, this time for Myth and Magic Stitch Wars is stitching 175 stitches to get glittery pebbles that I can, um, gift to any one of the clans that are currently fighting so they can use them in spells. So the Crystal Academy, um, I will have to pause and get that for you here in a minute. Hold on. All right. So I'm ready with the Crystal Academy, um, projects going on or, um, challenges going on this, this, uh, this month and this week. So um, this week, the Practical Enchantments class ends 10-7. Um, my uh, dorm, the Lampreys, we have our spells um, completed for, our spell studies completed for um, that one. And I have earned both spells in that, that ends 10-7. And then Forensic Studies, um, our dorm also has that one completed. And, um, I have the two spells for that one learned. Um, that ends on 10 11. Um, this weekend coming up, we have a, um, a spell sling, which is a basically a scrimmage where we take some of the spells that we've learned and battle another one of the dorms. 
Um, we'll have a thousand points to spend on our spells, and then we basically just see who could cast it by stitching faster than other people. And um, only six people out of the nine people in my dorm can participate. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be one of them. Um, but anyway, I may be stitching quite a bit this weekend to get um, some of those done. Um, each of the spells that we can use have different stitch requirements and cost a different amount of points. But each dorm has a thousand points to spend on their spells against the other team. And we'll see how we do in the scrimmage. I hope it'll be fun. That is the spell sling, and that's coming up this weekend. Um, then on October 26th, we're going on a, a school field trip. So that should be kind of interesting. I'm excited for that. Um, then on 1026, um, scrying and self-improvement class begins. And on November 9th, defense against devious spells class begins. So for those two classes on the 26th and November 9th, we will get two new spells to learn. Um, each spell has three tasks that we can complete to complete the task and we get points. So we have to learn, we have to do at least one task in each of the spells. But our dorm has to complete 20, 20 tasks per spell in order to truly learn the spell. So we have to break it down. There's nine of us in our in our dorm. So we kind of figure out um, in a chat room kind of what we need to do. Um, I've been helping out a lot, my dorm, because um, I do diamond painting. And there's been tasks in this group that... Um, require another craft that you have to do. So it's knitting, crocheting, diamond painting, or whatever. For the diamond painting, usually it's, we have to drill 1,200, which is why um, I showed you some of the, uh, we have to put on 1,200 drills on our diamond painting, which is why I've showed you the two diamond paintings um, recently. And I do have them here now. Um, I, I, when I was upstairs after dinner, I went and wandered around and grabbed a few things for the video. But anyway, so we have Spell Sling Scrimmage coming up this weekend. We'll see how we do. I'm hoping that we do okay. I don't know if I'll be picked as one of the six people in my dorm to participate. But um, part of me hopes so, but part of me doesn't really hope so. Because then I can get stitching on some other stuff that I want to stitch on and not really worry about this. Since we have all the studying done for our other classes that in this week. Um, so that is pretty much it for Crystal Academy. Um, the Stitchy Quest to Destroy the run One Ring. There is a fellowship side quest going on right now from October 2nd to the 16th. And it has to do with uh, defeating trees. Um, I guess it is kind of a, um, a follow-up quest to one that they did last year. But basically there are 13 different trees that we're supposed to battle. Each with uh, their own thing. The first one is a piece... Stitch on a piece with trees or tree parts. Um, I didn't write down what the requirements are. I don't know if, um, I can't remember if this is just, you know, stitch until you're done, but show your stitches um, kind of thing, or, you know, tell how many hours you did. But anyway, task one is um, stitch on a piece with trees or tree parts. So that would be pretty easy. Um, number two is any new start, stitch on any new start. So I could easily do. Um, Snow Village, I could easily do Pumpkin Swirl, I could easily do Sing a Song Samplers, I could, you know, do whatever. There's quite a few new starts that I have that I'd like to get going on. Um, task three is any any piece with frogs, insects, bats, rats, or related to illness, hospitals, COVID, or 2020. So I could obviously stitch my COVID um, long dog sampler for that. Uh, task four, any full coverage piece. Any of the Hades would work. Task five is a piece with a with a poison, venom, venomous creatures, or toxic substances. Uh, task six, backstitch any whip. I don't know if I'd do that one. Uh, just a lot of my pieces don't really have a lot of backstitch, but anyway. Um, task seven is any Halloween costume or mask. Task eight is um, anything that has a visible has visible water. Task nine. Is any night scene, night sky, or something using DMC 310? Task 10 is any piece related, um, any piece released earlier than or during 20 or 2000, the year 2000. So any piece released earlier than or during 2000 or related to an ancient civilization. 
Uh, task 11 is anything with visible, visible fire or smoke. Um, stone hearth hutch would fit in that one pretty easily. Uh, task 12 is a piece with foxes, cute animals, or a tricky pattern. Stone hearth hutch would be kind of a tricky pattern. Um, and task 13 is 50 hours total on other crafts, diamond painting included. So this, I think, is a, uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot, 50 hours? Yeah, that's a lot. Um, anyway, so that is for a Stitchy Quest to destroy the one ring. Um, so I talked about semi-sane stitchers. Um, the cross-stitch fin finish line, there's lots of events going on with that. So right now, from 10.5 to 10.7 is one in a series cell where um, you can stitch on anything that's in a series, like Sing a Song Samplers, Snow Village, anything that has the seahorses, the seahorses would be a good example, anything that's in a series that has many different patterns that make up one big one. Um, stitching in the Dark is from 10.8 to 10.10. Scary Lady Sal is from 10.11 to 10.13. The Boo Sal is from 10.14 to 10.16. The Stitchathon, the first Stitchathon for October is 1016 to 1018. Naughty Whip is 1019 to 1021. Gone Batty is 1022 to 1024. Black Cat is 1025 to 1027. Home Scary Home is from 1028 to 1030. And there is another Stitchathon at the end of the month from 1030 to 111. So that is for the group Cross Stitch finish line so and they, they kind of happen every, they happen every three days so there's a lot going on um, and the one in a series cell and a couple of the other ones actually uh, carry over from month to month to month so um, if you're interested in that join the cross stitch finish line they have different things going on for that I may or may not participate in any of those I don't know um, so that's it for that all right, then you have the 24 hours of cross stitch. The 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, the acrostic this month is Cuckoo Alarm. C-U-C-K-O-O-A-L-A-R-M. That is the acrostic. Cuckoo Alarm. All right, magazine monthly challenge this month is Spooky Stitches. And the acrostic is the word ghost. I haven't exactly picked out uh, what I'm doing for that yet. Um, I might do the... Um, Magazine pattern, um, Batty Bakery from the Frosted Pumpkin that was in one of the um, Just Cross Stitch Halloween issues. Um, that is upstairs, um, kind of in my to-do pile. Um, but that's basically it for Magazine Monthly Challenges. Um, virtual Stitchers, right now they have the series cell going on where you can stitch on any project that's part of a series. Like mm, the Seahorses or Sing a Song Samplers Do Re Mi or Snow Village, um, anything like that, anything that comes out in the series. You could do any of the, you could do Frosted Pumpkin Midnight Way. <laughs> you could do anything like that, anything that came out in the series. Um, then right now going on, there's also Darktober, and quite a few YouTubers are doing Starttober in preparation for, for No New Starts 2021, which is a Facebook group that you can join for next year, where you pledge to have no new starts in the year 2021. So a lot of people between now and the end of 2020 are starting everything they can. Um, and in order to consider it a new start, I believe for that um, new, no new starts 2021, you have to have at least 200 stitches in your piece in order to consider it a started piece for the no new starts. So keep that in mind if you want to do that. Um, start all the things between now and Chris. <laughs> Now in the end of the year, that's that's a, a hefty hefty goal to achieve, and I'm not going to do that because I I can't commit to no new starts for a year. I just can't do it. Um, for Stitch Mania this month, the tour do tour day designers is Owl Forest Embroidery. They're also doing Ornament October. Um, you have full coverage on the fifth every fifth of the month. Every fifth of every month, you do a full coverage piece. Um, they're also doing Work That Whip on the 15th. For those of you new to Cross Stitch, a whip, W-I-P, is called a work in progress. So that is some, play, some piece that you have at some 
stage of completion, whether it be you just put a couple of stitches in it, you're on the beading, you're on the back stitching, you, or whatever. You just have some sort of stitching stuff to do on it before it's completed for framing. Um, then on the 27th through November 4th, they are doing the presidential election challenge. So for this challenge, they have a different theme each day from the October 27th to November 4th. Um, I encourage you to join the group to get the um, themes. I didn't write down the themes to tell you about, but they are doing the presidential election challenge. Um, and they encourage anybody across the world to join in on this, even though this is kind of related to the um, United States presidential election coming up November 4th. So get out there and vote, you guys. Whether you mail in your vote, you vote absentee, you vote early at your polling places, or you go on the day of the election to vote, get out there and vote. Your vote matters. Okay? Get out there and vote. No matter how you vote, get out there and vote. All right, so that's it for Stitch Mania. Um, International Hermit and Stitch Weekend is coming up on October 16th through the 19th. So that is in Interna International Hermit and Stitch Weekend. And this month's whip go is Hunter's Moon and Porthole of Fantasy. And I brought them down here with me today. So the two squares that um, came up for me for whip go are Hunter's Moon and Porthole of Fantasy. So I will start off with the Porthole of Fantasy. They are both Heaven and Earth Designs patterns. So this is a Jasmine Beckett, Porthole of Fantasy 2 is a Jasmine Beckett Griffith pattern. And it's this little mermaid. She is adorable. I love Jasmine Beckett Griffith artwork. Love her. Met her at um, Disney under, Wonderground, the gallery at Downtown Disney out in California, uh, three summers ago. Um, she was doing a gallery showing at downtown Disney because she had a lot of um, Disney st and Star Wars themed pieces that she was um, showing there and she was there doing autographs and stuff. So I went and picked up a couple of her art pieces and showed her the one that I'm actually doing the diamond painting for. I showed her pictures of that um, so she could see it. But a lot of her artwork is licensed by Heaven and Earth Designs. So she was very happy to see somebody stitching some of her pieces. And um, she was very excited to see that. So I got to meet her. She's really nice. She's really great to talk to. So if you ever get to meet her, one of the best ways you can meet her is at downtown Disney in either Florida or California at the Wonderground Gallery. And you can actually get some of her artwork from the Wonderground Gallery at either location in Florida or California. Um, but this is a, a quick stitch, Porthole of Fantasy 2. And I did start this. Um, this is just on a piece of, I believe it is 28 count even weave that I got somewhere, like at Joann's or Michael's. It isn't a very big, I got a large piece of fabric, but the piece itself isn't, isn't very big. So... This is where I have started. I started at the top and the middle. So this is the top and the middle, essentially. This long line is where the middle is. Um, so this is the, the part in her hair. So if you look here, it's the part in her hair at the top. So you can see that. I'm doing this 10 stitch two over one on this 28 count. And this is just a basic piece of even weave that I picked up at Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby or someplace. But that is where I got on Porthole of Fantasy. This is where I will be starting when I pick this up to do my whips. And actually, I may be able to get working on this for... Um, a couple of the challenges this month. I'm not entirely sure because um, it one of the one of the challenges is something related to mermaids. So yeah, I could do this. 
So that is my Porthole of Fantasy. I haven't picked this up in a couple of years, actually. So this, uh, this piece is a couple of years old. Um, I didn't write down exactly when I started it. I don't think. No, I didn't write down when I started it. And this is one of the ones I have in Pattern Keeper. But anyway, that is a Porthole of Fantasy. This is one of my Whipgo, Whipgo squares. And you dig my uh, <laughs> project bag. It's just a jumbo hefty Ziploc bag. You can get these jumbo Ziploc bags at any place that sells baggies, like food storage baggies. Um, just look for the jumbo size. I believe these are two gallon bags. Just look for the jumbo size though. I picked these up at Target. These are hefty. Um, because they're hefty, they're a little more heavy duty and they're a little thicker than typical, um, typical bags. So my second piece for uh, Whip Go is a piece that I've gotten quite a bit done on. Heaven and Earth Designs. This is um, Allison Spokes is the artist. And the piece is called Hunter's Moon. Um, this was one of the one of the first couple of Heaven and Earth Design patterns that I picked up. I completely fell in love with the moon and the owl and the lady in the dress. Very reminiscent of uh, Mirabilia, Nora Corbett and her mom, Marilyn Leavitt Emblem. Very kind of reminiscent of their, um, of the gallant ladies. But this is just really pretty. And I actually have quite a bit done on this. Um, I'm stitching this on another 28 count, 28 count piece of mushroom even weave stuff that I picked up at either Michael's or Joann's. This is one that I, I'm parking threads on. So I'm playing with the parking. I've got quite, I've got a couple of pages on this done actually. Um, but don't mind the threads at the bottom, but you can see I'm kind of parking. I haven't worked on this in just a little bit, but I'm kind of playing with the parking on this. But this is where I've gotten to on Hunter's Moon. I'm almost all the way across. So it goes over to this blue line over here. That is as far over as it goes. But yeah, most of them, a good chunk of the moon is done. And you can see right in here, let me go ahead and fold this up so it's easier for me to hold. So you can see right in here, this is her hand. You can see her hand right here. Um, but yeah, so the moon is behind her. But you can see this um, This is kind of her hand that's above her head. She's going like this. She's going like this. So um, anyway, that's her hand that's over her head. You can see that really well right there. And again, I'm doing this two over one tenth stitch. And it's really bulky. Um, the stitching in here is pretty bulky in this area that I've already completed. It's, uh, it's pretty thick. It gives a nice texture, but it's it's pretty thick. So I think this is roughly, I'm on the fifth or sixth page going across. Yeah. And they started working with parking. Um, so, yep. This is Hunter's Moon. This is where I'm at. I um, haven't worked on this in, I haven't worked on this at all this year. So it's been since 2019 that I've worked on it. Um, worked on it some last year, but yeah, it's a uh, two over one tent on 28 count mushroom colored, um, even weave fabric. So that is where I'm at on Hunter's Moon. So the next thing that I'm probably going to be working on um, for this month, I have a piece of artiste fabric from Hobby Lobby, um, 18 by 15 piece of white even weave. Um, I am involved in a new, um, a new Christmas stitch along that got started. We're in the second week. The second pattern was just released this Sunday. 
Um, it is called Countdown to Christmas. It's by a lady, or it's um, by a lady whose company is Hannah Handmakes. And you can go to Hannah's Handmakers Facebook group and get more information about how to join this stitch along. But she created this pattern for this Christmas Advent calendar where you stitch stitch a Christmas, Christmas Advent calendar. So we have the pattern for the top of the piece and the patterns for the first nine of the Advent calendar squares. And you can either do it as... An advent calendar, like she's like the main, like the main premise of this stitch along is, or you can choose to stitch it more as a sampler, so it's all on one piece of Ada, and you don't have to worry about putting the boxes together, because the advent calendar you stitch basically the background of the main piece, and then you stitch all the little individual squares on a different piece of Ada, so you can cut them out and turn them into the boxes for the advent calendar. So I've kind of I haven't started yet. We've got the um we've got the main the main header piece um already and the first nine box motifs to stitch um because we're in week two and up until now I was kind of torn really on what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I really wanted to be stitching on uh two pieces of fabric and I didn't know if I really wanted to bother cutting squares and all that. Um, I had an idea. The main body is technically stitched on a piece of red Ada. And I'm talking like, don't mind the Tic Tacs. These are Coca-Cola Tic Tacs, by the way. These are really good. Um, Coca-Cola red Ada. And I didn't know that I wanted to stitch on red Ada. Um, I have a couple of pieces of even weave, again, purchased from Hobby Lobby. I have a couple of pieces of even weave that would uh, work just fine. That'd be the right size, but they're all in white. And I also don't know that I want to stitch all in white because the header has a lot of snowflakes and stuff on it and the words are in white. So what I thought I would do is um, I initially thought that I would take a piece of my white even weave. Here is a piece of it here. This is a 15 by 18 piece of white even weave. It is the um, Artiste Brown, Artiste brand from Hobby Lobby. This 28 count even weave, 15 by 18. That is the size we need for the 14 count Ada, if we were gonna use it. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up tonight and probably serge the edges. And um, I think I want to use kind of a brownish writ dye to kind of age the fabric a little bit and then use a red writ dye. I have scarlet in writ um, and add some red to it to make it kind of Christmassy and make it kind of antique -y. But I'm going to stitch the countdown to Christmas um, stitch along on this piece once I get it dyed. Um, and I kind of figured out today that I'm probably going to stitch it as a sampler just because I don't want to mess with cutting and putting little boxes together and using felt and doing all that. Um, so anyway, this is the piece that I picked up the Etoile threads for. Etoile is that kind of sparkly DMC that you can get. So there's a white Etoile, um, a yellow Etoile, a dark red Etoile, a bright red etoile, a brighter red etoile, and a gold etoile. They also use DMC light effects. So these are the etoile threads for the Countdown to Christmas sow. Um, but anyway, I have it I have it ready to go. I just haven't started it yet because I want to dye the fabric first. But before I dye the fabric to keep the edges from fraying anymore, I'm going to um, serge this on, I'm going to faux serge this on my basic sewing machine. Um, you can faux serge using a zigzag stitch followed by a straight stitch over the stitches to lock them in. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go upstairs um, probably later tonight and do this and get into the dyeing of the fabric. So maybe this weekend I can actually get started on the countdown of Christmas cell. Um, give me just a second. 
and let me see if I can get a picture for you. So the Facebook group is called Hannah, Hannah's Hand Makers. So it's the countdown to Christmas 2020. Oh my, you're not going to be able to see that at all. You can kind of see it there. Countdown to Christmas 2020 stitch along. Okay. Mm. So here's kind of um, kind of a little idea of kind of what the um, what the header of the piece looks like um, stitched on red Ada. And sorry the the light the light the picture is a little washed out, but um, that kind of gives you an idea of what this stitch along is looking like. That is the header. Um, I don't want it. I don't want my piece to be all on that bright red. Um, I might actually also add a little bit of green into it to make it a little more Christmassy. But at first I'm gonna um, kind of dunk this into kind of a brown to antique it a little bit, to give it a little more antique -y. And then antique -y look, and then add the red scarlet to it. And then um, I'll be ready to start this once the fabric's dry and ready to go. So this is for my Countdown to Christmas stitch along that I'm gonna be participating in now. Um, I'm gonna be doing it as the sampler. I'm about 90% sure. Um, but other than that, I really don't have much else going on. There's just a lot. Um, so you've seen my two whip go pieces for this month that I really need to pull out and work on. Um, I'd like to get more done on Midnight Way. Um, magazine monthly challenge. Um, I kind of still am up in the air about what I'm working on for this month's theme piece, but it's probably going to be, um, Betty Bakery from Frosted Pumpkin that was in the Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue. I believe it was Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2018. I could be wrong about that. But if not that one, then there is also um, this little cat pumpkin that was really absolutely adorably cute. Um, really, it'd be a really quick stitch. I can also work on that. Um, I have to see if I have like a die. Um, that I can dye a small piece of fabric for that. But I do have Grape Ice Weeks Dye Works fabric. That, I think it's Weeks Dye Works fabric that I'm going to use for Batty Bakery because it's kind of purple and it will go with the purple in Midnight Way. Um, Midnight Way, by the way, this piece, this is done on Picture This Plus Flapper. Flapper is the color for this. But yeah, the um, Batty Bakery is going to be on a purple that isn't quite this uh, modeled. And it's it's a little more pinky purple than this. Um, but it's weak style works. I think the color is grape ice that I have for the battery bakery. So if I, the battery bakery is going to be about roughly this size. So it'll be a good stitching project for the month. But um, anyway, that's really all I have for you this month, <laughs> this week. So hopefully you've had a good week. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of craziness going on in the United States right now. Um, if you haven't heard lots of craziness and, uh, I'm not really going to go into how I feel because I'm kind of wrestling with how I feel about the things going on here. Um, all I know is you just really need to get out and vote if you're in the United States and you just need to do it. No matter how you do it, get out there and vote because your vote's going to really matter this time. And there's a lot hanging by a thin thread on this election. So get out there and vote. Um, stay healthy. Wear your damn masks. Yes, I did cuss at you. Wear your damn masks because, yeah, even though you're not 100% Protected by wearing a mask, you protect other people around you. Wear your damn masks, okay, everybody? All right, so enough about that. Um, I'll get off my soapbox now, 
And uh, that's really all I have for you. So just stay healthy, stay well. If you need help, please reach out to somebody. Um, they can probably, they'll probably know how to help you or where you can go for help if you need it. Um, and just be kind to each other. Just be nice um, and vote. Voting is important. Um, so until next time, just keep on keeping on because that's really all we can do. And we'll see you soon. Bye.